Brothers and sisters, I'd like to ask one very important question. What quality defines us best as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Today I'd like to spend about, uh, to speak about the answer to this question. In the first century AD, members of the growing church at Corinth were enthusiastic about the gospel. Almost all were recent converts to the church. Many were attracted to it through preaching of the gospel by the Apostle Paul and others. But the saints in Corinth were also contentious. They argued amongst themselves. Some felt superior to others. They took each other, took each other to court. When Paul heard of this, he a, a feeling, a sense of frustration. He wrote them a letter pleading with them to become more unified. He answered many of the questions they had been arguing about. Then towards the end, he told them that he wanted them to show a more excellent way. Do you remember the words he wrote next? Though I speak with the tongue of angels, of men and angels, and have not clarity, he told them, I become a sounding brass or tinking cymbal. Paul's message to this new body of saints was simple and direct. Nothing you do make, makes much difference if you do not have charity. You can speak with tongues, have the gift of prophecy, understand the mysteries, and possess all knowledge, even if you have the faith to move mountains. Without charity, it won't profit you at all. Charity is the pure love of Christ. The Savior exemplified that love and taught it even as was tormented by those who despised and hated him. On one occasion, the Pharisees tried to trap Jesus by asking him a simply, a seemingly impossible question. Master, they asked, which is the greatest commandment of the law? The Pharisees had debated this question extensively and had identified more than 600 commandments. If prioritizing them was such a difficult task to scholars, certainly they thought the question would be impossible for this son of, car of a carpenter from Beck Galilee. When the Pharisees heard this answer, they must have been troubled, for it pointed to their great weakness. He replied, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the great first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Since that day, this inspired pronouncement has been repeated through many generations. Now for us, the measure of our love is the measure of the greatness of our souls. The scriptures tell us that if any man love God, the same is known of him. What a wonderful promise to be known of him. It makes the spirit soar to think that the creator of heaven and earth could know us and love us with pure eternal love. In 1840, the prophet Joseph sent an epistle to the Twelve wherein he taught that love is one of the chief char characteristics of deity and ought to be maintained by those who aspire to be the sons of God. A man filled with the love of God is not content with blessing a family alone, but targets through the whole world, anxious to bless the whole human race. As we reach out to love to those around us, we fulfill other half, the other half of the great commandment to love, her, to love thy neighbor as thyself. Both commandments are necessary, for as we bear one another's burdens, we fulfill the law of Christ. Love is the beginning, the middle, and the end of the pathway of discipleship. It comforts, counsels, cures, and consoles. It leads us through valleys of darkness and through the veil of death. In the end, love leads us to glory and grandeur of eternal life. For me, the Prophet Joseph has always exemplified the pure love of Christ. Many asked why he gained so many followers and retained them. His answer is because I possess the principle of love. The story is told of a 14-year-old boy who had come to Nauvoo to search of his brother who lived near there. The young boy had arrived in the winter with no money and no friends. When he inquired about his brother, the boy was taken to a large house that looked like a hotel. There he met a man who said, Come in, son, we'll take care of you. 
The boy accepted and was brought into the house where he was fed, warmed, and was given a bed to sleep in. The next day it was bitter cold, but in spite of that the boy prepared himself to walk eight miles to where his brother was staying. When the man of the house saw, saw this, he told the young boy to stay for a while. He said there would be a team coming soon and that he could ride back with them. When, when the boy protested, saying he had no money, the man told him not to worry about that, that they would take care of him. Later the boy learned that the man of the house was none other than Joseph Smith, the Mormon prophet. This boy remembered this act of charity for the rest of his life. In a recent message to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir's music and the spoken word, a story was told of an elderly man and woman who had been married for many decades. Because the wife was slowly losing her sight, she could no longer take care of herself the way she had done for so many years. Without being asked, the husband began to paint her fingernails for her. He knew that she could see her fingernails when she held them close to her eyes. At just the right angle, and they made her smile, he liked to see her happy, so he kept painting her nails for more than five years before she passed away. As an example of pure love of Christ, sometimes the greatest love is not found in the dramatic scenes that poets and writers immortalize. Often the greatest manifestations of love are the simple acts of kindness and caring we extend to those we meet along the path of life. True love lasts forever, is eternally patient and forgiving. It believes, hopes, and endures all things. That is the love of our Heavenly Father bears for us.